Hello and welcome to another training video. Now this is another one in Power Query in Excel, um, also looking at the data modeling within Excel. Now the issue we have here is that we have some transaction records and we have a date timestamp with the transaction and this is facts table very clearly and we have a product ID but nowhere in the fact of that transaction is recorded the price of the product ID. Now what we do have is we have a related table which has the product ID and it has the price of each pack. Um, but the downside here is we actually have had the price updated multiple times for the same product ID. Now what this would give us is a relationship between that product ID, now hopefully we've sold many of this product ID, so there will be many instances of each product ID over time, but also I have many instances of the same product ID in this table. Now this brings us to something called a many-to-many -many relationship. Now within Power Query, in Excel, we cannot create many-to-many -many relationships. Um, so within Power BI we now can, so it's something that may come in the future within Excel. Uh, but at the moment within Excel what we need to do is we need to create a file that has the unique IDs that we can use. Um, I'm just going to close those two down and we're going to go into our query itself. Now the query that I've done, actually you'll notice there are three queries here. Um, so I've got the transactions. Now this is not just the CSV file because this transactions is actually looking at the whole of a folder and all of the files for transactions that are in there now or could be loaded into that folder in the future. And th that's why I didn't just use a straightforward VLOOKUP on the CSV, although I could have done that. It wouldn't have been dynamic. In other words, it wouldn't have then been applied also to any files that get loaded in there in the future. Um, Equally, my table products at the moment, I've got it as a query, and the great thing about that is if any future price rises are put into this table products, they will also be brought through into my merged queries. Now, I've created a bridging query. Now, if I double-click on there to bring up the query, all I've actually done with this query is I referred to the first of my queries. So over here, my table products, I've simply referred to it here and I say equals table products. Now I didn't actually say equals table products. I right clicked on there and I said reference. In other words, I want to refer to the result of that query. Now I'm not going to use anything in that query, but in this one here that I'm working on now, what I then did was I said, well, do you know what? I actually don't want these two columns because firstly this one here tells me the update date and the price at that update and I can't use them because there's multiples of them which therefore gives me multiples of my unique ID or what's going to be the unique ID. So I removed those columns and then I removed all the duplicates from my product ID column. So this now leaves me with a bridging table which has one instance of each product ID. Now what I can do with this one is I can now bring that in my data model. And so if I go straight into my diagram view in the data model, I can put my bridging query in between these two other existing queries. So my transactions by year I have many instances of each product ID, but over here I only have one, so that will create a one-to-many relationship. Over here I have one instance of my product ID, over here I have four, in this case for each product ID, so I have a one-to-many or many-to-one, so I can create that kind of relationship. But what I couldn't do is create a relationship from my product ID here to my product ID in this table because that is a many-to-many -many relationship and you cannot create that in Excel. Like I say, you can now do that in uh, Power BI, but you can't yet do that in Excel. Okay, what I next did 
was I right clicked on here and I said hide from client tools. Now what that means is when I then go to create a pivot table, I'm not going to get confused between my food category in this table and my food category here. Now the reason I need to be careful is because this food category cannot filter across into my transactions. And the reason is because it's going the wrong way down a, a filter arrow. It cannot go into the one, it can only filter in that direction. And it's kind of like a funnel, try pouring stuff backwards down a funnel. Doesn't work very well. Um, so things can only filter in the direction of the arrow there. So I can use these categories to filter this here, but I can't use these categories because they have to go against the flow of an arrow. Now we've got a couple of other things that we need to do. So we're going to have a look at doing these again in the data model. So let's just go back to the data model and we're now in the data view rather than the diagram view and we're going to work out what the current price is. And in fact, I did this in the query itself. So let's go into the query. And in the, just double click on there to open up the query editor. Um, in the query itself, so this is in the transactions query, so transactions by year. And down to that point there where it says changed type, all that's doing is loading all the files from a certain folder, checking to see that the metadata extension is a CSV in lowercase, and, and then just bringing out the data from within those files and then merging them all together or appending them one under the other. Uh, so combining them into a single data set. Now what we then do is we take that there and we merge it together with our table product. So not the bridging one, but the original one. So we merge them together. Now, if I click on that cog there, you'll see the actual merge itself. Now, the merge is just using the product ID because they match very well. Um, uh, but I'm using a left outer. In other words, every single item from my transactions, but only the ones that match here. Now, what that means is if I don't have a transaction, but I do have a, a product ID, it's not going to come across. What it also means is that where I have a product ID here, for each one of these rows here, I'm going to get four rows from here. Now the way that this comes in is it actually comes in not as data but as a table of data because it is all four of the rows. What you then do is you click on that button there to expand it out and you get a chance of selecting what data you want from each of these tables. Now at the moment that table contains all of the data, all of the fields from table products, but I only want two of them. I only actually want the date of the update and the price that it became on that date. I don't need the product ID because I already have that over here. Now, because I have four answers for each one, each product ID will now give me four rows. So I'll end up with four times as many rows as I already have within my data. When I expand it out, you'll see that there are the two extra columns that I've got, and I have four instances for each product ID. So when I went across to the product ID, you see that all four of those prices are for the same product ID but at these dates when they were updated. OK, so the next thing I have to do is I have to look at this column here and see that the data type here is just a date, whereas the thing that I want to actually compare it to is a date time. Now, silly as it seems, I can't compare the two because they have different data types. So I don't want to change this one into just a date. And the reason I don't want to do that is because I also want to do some analysis later on based upon the hour of day to see what products sell best at what time of day. Um, so I'm not going to discard that information. I'm going to extract out the date component and I do that by add column and extract out the date only part. And that's what I've done there. And then I reordered the columns just so that the date component appears next to the date time. 
Um, I'm now adding a conditional column. And if I click on the drop down for the conditional, what I'm saying is I'm looking for date, which is what I've just brought out. So it's the date component from my transaction. And I'm saying if it is after or equal to the update date, which is when my price of the product was updated, then give me the pack price. So if the date of the sale were after an update date, then it's going to give me the price. Otherwise, give me a null. And we're going to see that actually we do end up with a few nulls. Now, straight away, I'm going to get rid of the nulls by simply filtering them out. But that doesn't solve the problem because this one here, that's perfect. My current price, because the transaction itself took place in 2015, I've only got one instance of it, which was my 2015 price, because my 2016, 17 and 18 updates were all later than the transaction. However, with the next one, the transaction itself was in 2017, and so I also get the 2016 and the 2015 prices for that particular product. So I'm just going to reorder the columns again, just so that we can see I've brought my price across the beginning, so we can actually see that for that particular transaction. You'll see there's three timestamps exactly the same. I have the three different prices there. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort by the update date. And I'm sorting descending. So the most recent update is now on top. And what that has done is it then lets me remove duplicates. And the first one that it comes to will be the one that it keeps. It then removes the subsequent ones. If previously they were all listed the other way around, so the first one it found would have been the earliest possible version of the updated price, which is absolutely not what I want. I want the latest version of the updated price. So that's what it's done by resorting them. And I sorted by the date of the update and then removed the duplicates. Now, when I'm removing duplicates, I'm not just removing a duplicate of the product ID. I'm removing it where also the date time of the transaction, the till ID, cashier ID, product ID, quantity, customer ID, payment type, all of these are identical and therefore it is just removing the duplicates of each instance from when I expanded out that table. I've then just reordered the columns again um, and I'm sorting the rows by the transaction date and time again. Um, but there really is no reason to do those last two steps there, other than me wanting to look at the query and see it nice and tidy. OK, so that's where we got to in the query itself. Now we're going to close this down and go into the data model. And we're going to take a look at a, a couple of measures that we can put in. So the measures are a calculation. And the first one I've put in is a calculated column. And this calculated column gives me the line total for each transaction, or each fact within the transaction. And this is based upon the current price. And it's the current price within that row, which is what we just worked out in the Power Query. And it returns the current price here, multiplied by the number of items that were purchased in this row. And that gives us our line total. So the actual quantity multiplied by the current price gives us our line total. And now what we can do is we can basically here build a pivot table. So I just do Alt N V Enter. There's my pivot table. You'll notice that I don't have my table products appearing here because I hid that from the client tools, remember. And um, we do have the bridge and so from this bridge, I could bring, for example, food category down into my rows. And now I can say, but what I also want is I want my line total. So I can come here. And if I put line total into values, because it's a numeric, it's going to give me the sum of line total, which is exactly what I want. Now, the clever thing here, this is the sum of my line totals. 
dependent upon what the cost of the product was when it was sold, not based upon current prices. So that was the total value of all of those products sold for the price they were sold for at the time they were sold. Um, and just to demonstrate that a bit further, if I drag my year component down into here, you'll notice that these prices increase slightly over time, uh, excluding my randomization there. Um, but not always, because most of them in 2018 will decrease. And the reason there is back in my actual prices, uh, so if I go into my query and load up the products themselves, you'll see that my 2018 price increase was actually a price decrease. So if I go here, for all of my products, 329, this has gone down to 319. 242 has gone down to 235. 77 has gone down to 74. Um, well, what I did was I put a multiplication factor in there of 0.97. Now, the reason for this is because prices don't always go up. So the temptation is, rather than reordering these and then removing the duplicates, the uh, temptation might be to find the max within the grouping, so where the uh, product ID was the same, just to find the biggest number. Now that doesn't work because prices do sometimes go down as well as up. So that's the solution that I came up with. Um, it does kind of solve the problem of a many-to-many -many relationship with two different data sources where there's uh, they're not strictly speaking a lookup and a fact table they're actually strictly two fact tables but we're using one of them as a lookup but we can't use it directly we need to create a bridging table between the two which has the unique values and we're then doing a couple of steps to extract the relevant part of the data we need okay I hope that's been useful to you. Um, I hope somebody finds it useful. And as always, thank you for listening.